studies, namely in karyology, periodontology, and biomaterials. He has done numerous hands-on courses on both anterior and posterior composite, and is also currently a consultant for Eva Klo. Today, he will give us uh, the first lecture in a series of three lectures. And today's lecture is uh, titled Sention N, a probe and bioactive alternative to amalgam and glass ionomer. So I'd like to hand over to you, Doc, you can proceed. If you have any questions, member, we, members, we can type them as usual in the chat, or you can ask at the end of the lecture. Thank you, Doc, you can proceed. Okay, thank you very much, Constance. It's my pleasure to be here. The topic, as you could hear, is Sention N, a proven bioactive alternative to amalgam and glass ionomer cement. Now, I had a wonderful introduction. Thank you again. I'm really native Swiss, born and graduated in Switzerland. I'm still living in the central part of Switzerland. And um, beside my university affiliation to the Zurich University, I have also a private clinic uh, since 38 years. So I have a lot of dental experience, I would say, on my shoulders. And I'm still working at the patient. I think I can share with you really my experiences, the approach to the patient, what we need, what we do need, and how it is really functioning. And beside all this, I have a consultant company. I'm consulting Ivocar, but also other companies. So you see me at th this next picture, uh, just with red hairs. It changed a little bit now during the years. And, um, I'm always giving lectures, trainings all over the world. On the upper left side, this is in my clinic in Switzerland. And then you see me in China, in Russia, in, and last year on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, two years ago before Corona came in India to give really trainings at the patient, hands-on courses. So I think I can really share the experience and I know what it will mean to work at the patients and to approach the patients. Now, we are talking about the restorations options. What do we have nowadays? At the top of the top of the pyramid, we have digital, indirect, with five axis milling machine, CAD CAM, wonderful. But I tell you, it's the future. It's okay. We developed in my university the CEREC system. 35 years ago, my friends. It took over 30 years that these things are functioning. But I tell you, even in Europe, in Switzerland, in Germany, not more than eight to maximum 10% of the dentists are using this because it is not every dentist's thing to do digital scanning. And also it's a financial aspect. So anyway, at the top, we have nowadays digital. It's absolutely the future. But in the middle, we have direct composite restorations, layering technique. You are aware about this. And at the bottom, we have basic, basic restorations. Now, adhesive technique, composite, layering technique, it is wonderful. But when you are doing this, and when you are following these protocols, Exactly, it takes a time to do it seriously. You need also a dry operation fleet. And it needs time. And moreover, you know, you need patients who can afford this. And not every patient can afford this. This is all over the world the same thing. And I tell you also in Switzerland. So we have also the conventional technique at the bottom, where we still have glass ionomer cement and amalgam. Now, glass ionomer cement, I'm also using this. It's wonderful. For small restorations, it's absolutely great. We have long experiences with glass ionomer cements. But the problem is, for extended restorations, look at the left picture. The material is not strong enough. This is a study of the Amsterdam, the Netherlands uh, clinic, a six-year uh, retrospective study, clinical study. And you always see in the posterior region, the fractures, the typical chipping of the marginal ridge of glass ionomer cements. You don't have the fracture at the isthmus. 
you have it in the interdental area. And you heard, I started my career as periodontist. Then you have a problem, an interdental problem. You see at the right hand side, the papilla is inflamed. It will disappear. You have always food impaction. The patient is not happy with us. So for small restorations, glacial measurements are nice, but not for extended ones and also not class two, class one in the posterior region. And even uh, materials like Equifilm, Fuji 9GP, these are developed, improved versions of glass inamer cements are not functioning so perfectly. This is a new study of Professor Hickel, my colleague in Munich, Munich University. He did a three year clinical study in class two cavities of permanent teeth. And he could see that Equifil and Fuji 9 have a survival rate of only 86% and 84%. So it will mean after three years, after three years, you have already um, failures and loss and fractures rates of 15%, 16%. This is too much. This is too much. On the other hand, we have still amalgam and um, I tell you also in Europe, amalgam is still used, um, except in the northern countries like Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Netherlands, it is forbidden. You are not allowed to place um, any more amalgam restorations. And so you are aware about this Minamata Convention on Mercury. This is the global treaty to protect human health and the environment from mercury. I guess you all agree, my friends, mercury is not nice and uh, we don't like it so much, but it is a long lasting material. You have, you and me, we have patients, you have a look at them, they have amalgam restorations, 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, still in place. They are, they are mostly black. And if you remove it, the dentin is also black and brownish, but still hard. So the material is a successful material, but with this mercury inside, really, yeah, we should have options nowadays. So this Minamata Convention, I think um, is an important global treaty. And what is the goal? Reduction of mercury worldwide, the usage of amalgam separator. I guess you, it is not yet mandatory in your country. In my country, in Europe, in most countries, it is um, mandatory. It will mean it is a filter system. You have to be uh, this installed at your dental equipment. It will filter away all the amalgam debris uh, when you are doing amalgams. But still, when you are not doing amalgam, just removing the amalgam, drilling out, you have to collect this debris. So this will come in the future to every country. So basically a reduction of amalgam worldwide. So, and we need options. We need options, new materials. And some words again to this Minamata convention until now, 137 countries have signed it. Also your wonderful country Zimbabwe has signed it in 2013 and is party since uh, last year, 2021. So it will mean we have also to think about the phase out of amalgam. And uh, you see that um, really this will be necessary more and more. And also the patients come to us and, and ask us, yeah, hey, what's about this amalgam? So we go ahead. When we are doing restorations, my colleagues, aesthetics and functionality is strongly related in this way. For me, it starts always with functionality because our patients want at first to be without pain. They want to be able to eat, to smile. Okay. And aesthetics, okay. Aesthetic is related absolutely to functionality, but comes for me second because aesthetics without functionality is not working. And this, is the other point, daily experience. 
in every country of the world, you have such cases. And you are surprised. I took this picture in Switzerland. In Switzerland, we have also countryside. We have also a lot of refugees now from other countries coming to us. And we have, we should not forget this, we have older patients. Average age in Switzerland for women is 84 years. For men, 82. It will increase in every country. In your country is a little bit lower, but it will increase because of the pro progress, at, uh, the success in medicine. It will, it will also come to your country. So we have to treat 80 year old, 85 year old, 90 year old patient. It's not so easy to do layering technique or place a, a rubber dam or something like that. And for me, it is always a big challenge to really to treat older patients because they are sitting in the chair, <coughs> they're coughing, they, they have a problem. And they cannot open maybe as a youngster with 20 years. So we need also materials to give solutions to such patients. So when you have such a case, such a cavity, you have all the options. You can do digital CAT scan to produce an inlay with the scanner, great. Nice preparation before, wonderful. You can do a layering technique, building up, okay? Very aesthetically, it takes a time and it costs also some money for the patient. We should not forget. For example, in Germany, if a patient wants to have a composite restoration, the insurance will not pay composite. Patient has to pay himself. They only pay in amalgam, an amalgam. The same is in United Kingdom. It's NHS system. So we have also to respect the financial situation of the patient. For me, the philosophy is always, you cannot sell, you cannot give every patient a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce. Some patients are happy with a bicycle, others with a small Toyota car, with a motorbike. You know, I think we need solutions, solutions for every patient. So we have to ask us, Basic fillings, we are talking about basic fillings. What are the requirements? For me, full volume replacement, like amalgam, this is nice, okay? Ease of application, it must be easy to do. Layering is nice, but takes time. A simple dental equipment only, okay? In many clinics and practices, you have light equipment. Wonderful light equipment has been developed, you know, with all the wavelengths, wonderful things. But don't believe that in every practice, not in Europe, not in the States, not in India, in Asia, every dentist has a nice light equipment. So it should be a simple dental equipment. Then the material should be strong and durable. I prefer self-curing. Tooth colored is an advantage and environment friendly and at the end, affordable for the patients, affordable. So Ivo Klar, this company um, is situated in the Principality of Liechtenstein, close to Switzerland, has developed in 1914, uh, in uh, sorry, in 2014, has started to develop Sention N, powder liquid filling material, as alternative to amalgam. And this was really the direct response to the Minamata Convention. So the launch was in 2016. I supported the company, I gave lecture, I really, I, I helped them to do this. It was not so easy. We started in India, we went to Asia, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, to these countries. Then we started also in South Africa. This was in 2017, 2018. Then North Africa and Latin America. Now the Centium N is introduced in the United States and in Canada and also in South America. 
you know, it is always depending this introduction on the registration of a material. This is a very complicated procedure. I learned also about a lot of things about this because it takes a time. It takes months, it takes sometimes years until you can enter a country. For example, China still, it needs two years just to get the, the permission to do an application. It is incredible. So this is the story of Saint Yun-en. Now, positioning of Saint Yun-en is clearly at the basement of my pyramid. Aside from glass universe cement and amalgam, it is quick and easy. And at the top of the pyramid, we still have adhesive technique, layering technique. Please see this clear difference. And um, I think we have to follow absolutely the clinical protocol in this way. Composite at the top is layering technique, adhesive technology. We developed this in my university, Switzerland in Zurich in the 70s. It's a wonderful thing, but it takes time and you have to follow the protocol seriously. Basic, it is a little bit another thing. The name centium comes from 100, centium 100, Latin word, and iron is iron release. So we have three core points. It is 100% 100 volume replacement. I don't need layers. If I have a death of the filling of two millimeters or three or five or 10, I don't care because it is self-curing. Flexible strengths, what's that? Resistance to fracture. My friends, you and me, we cannot measure this in our clinics. You can just measure this in the universities and some specialized departments for materials. The companies can measure this. We can just trust to the company. But I tell you, we tested it. We tested it in my university, in various universities. The resistance to fracture is over 100 megapascal. Then 100% lifelike appearance, you will see it looks nice. Not high aesthetic, but it looks nice. Then what is the categorization? I don't want to bother you with a lot of theoretical university stuff. It is an alkazite, is a special composite alkazite because of a special filler inside. But it is a composite based material because we have fillers and we have dimetacrylates. It is not a cement like a glassy universe cement. It is a composite. So we have two components. It is chemical curing, auto curing, or, and optionally light curing. When I have a light equipment, you will see I can light curing, but it is not mandatory. So this key to the success of this material of Cention N is really this alkaline glass filler. This filler is potented and has the ability to release ions. I have a core of silicium oxide. Around I have the salts calcium oxide, sodium oxide, and calcium fluoride. And in the oral cavity, I have a dissolution, a dissociation, the release of ions, fluoride, calcium, and hydroxide. And unique is hydroxide. Calcium and fluoride are also in the glass universements, but not in a composite. This is absolutely unique. And for what's that? You see again, Saint Yun N. Normally in the oral cavity, you have a neutral pH value, 7.2 around. And then under an acidic attack, you have biofilm. You have millions of bacteria, lactobacillus, all these bacteria we learned, wonderful. Together with sugar, they produce acid. And the more acid I have in oral cavity, the more release of ions I have. And so you see simply hydroxide ions together with the protons from the acid gives water. We can prove this. And I show you afterwards how we measure this at my university. This is uh, really fascinating, this neutralization. And moreover, 
Centium N is forming also deposits for the remineralization. In the presence of saliva, fluoride and calcium are forming calcium fluoride, calcium phosphate. This is strengthening the appetite. The enamel, these are old stories. We learned this and we know this, we are aware about this. And these two products are also the base for the remineralization. We cannot heal a caries in the dentin, but we can really, with this eye release, we can heal a lesion in the enamel with some fluoride and calcium. So this is really working. We can control it by bindings. Remineralizing effect. When I look at the sentient restoration, this is the initial uh, surface. And when I look at the surface after one month, you see something arising. What's that? These are the small deposits. You see it here again. Very small deposits of 0.5 this calcium fluoride, calcium phosphate. And these are also at the margins of the restoration. That's why we can also say it is in a kind bioactive this material. And the point is we can also prove that the iron release is on, on, on demand. It will mean the more acid I have the situation in the oral cavity, the more iron release I have. The blue columns will mean I have a acidic situation. So I have much more release of fluoride and also of calcium. We can prove this for 26 months, more than two years. So I have an increased iron release at low pH. Now I told you, we can prove this neutralization. I belong to a research team, yeah, 20 years ago. And we asked, how is this really functioning with this carriers in vivo? You know, in vitro to measure this, it's another point, but to see it really in vivo, how is this carriers really progressing? How is this functioning? So we were developing miniaturized pH class electrodes to measure the pH, the degree of acid, and we, with some electronic stuff, and we embedded this in partial dentures. And we want to measure in the interproximal area to measure the acidic attack, to measure the acid. So these patients were wearing this prosthesis day and night, eating, drinking, but not brushing teeth during two days until seven days. So we could accumulate biofilm, millions, trillions of bacteria, lactobacillus, all this, all this animals, nice animals, you know. And then you see the head of the electrode and then the patient comes to the clinic. Then we give the patient, you see the pH in the vertical and the, the time scale in the horizontal. pH normally is 7.2, 7.0. Then we give the patient a teaspoon of sucrose. You take in the morning in the coffee or the tea. You see what happened. This patient has not brushed teeth during one week, seven days. You see, this is the same Stefan curve. It goes down from seven to four. This is the acidic attack. And we know that the critical level is 5.5. Below 5.5, it starts. And with this measuring system, we really could analyze and we could um, really calculate how long it will take. Normally it will take after one month. In this way, you can see the first carriers. But now you see the other point. When the curve reaches pH four, this is very acidic, that's clear. We just give the patient water to rinse, water, hydroxide ions. And you see what happened, what happens? The curve goes up again and PC is paraffin chewing. Paraffin chewing, a chewing gum, a neutral chewing gum. The patient, if the patient takes chewing gum, more saliva, more amount of saliva, I have more neutralization. It's fascinating. This is the neutralization. And so this we could prove also with ingredients of the sentient N of the fillers to see this neutralization. When you take instead of sucrose, xylitol, xylitol is also sugar. It is um, given, and a lot of diabetic patients take xalitol because um, 
uh, it will not impact, you know, the blood level. So xalito, you know, the bacteria, they don't like it so much, the sugar. They produce some acid, but still until pH 6. So it is not harmful to tooth. To teeth. So you see this neutralization. I just wanted to show you we can prove this. And this is no joke. This is no fake. It's really working, this neutralization. This ion release effect. So hydroxy ion, as I showed, regulates the pH value and helps in this way to prevent the demineralization of the two substrate, the progress of carriers. Fluoride and calcium are doing the same. And we should not forget, we have with this ion release effect, with this bioactivity, we have the start of the remineralization of enamel. So this is the newest study of the University of Paris and then comparing fluoride releasing restorative materials. And they found really that sentient N is the first commercially available bioactive resin composite. This is really no other composite in the whole wide world which is releasing ions. Plus universe cement, yes, but these are cements, but these are not composites. Other point is, a lot of colleagues always ask me, okay, you can prove this two years, two years and a half, this ion release. And then after two years, what happens? Do we have an empty network, which is, um, you know, we, which breaks down? No, we should also not exaggerate. Okay, we have an ion release, fluoride, calcium, hydroxide, and we have some PPMs, 200 PPMs at the beginning, afterwards a little bit less. Um, you need also some fluoride, and calcium concentrations afterwards in your oral cavity. That's clear. That's why we should also instruct our patients to use fluoride containing toothpaste. So in this paper, they showed that when a patient is using regularly a fluoride containing toothpaste, you can reload this structure, reload this is a so-called battery effect. Okay, there are some studies now underway together with classroom and companies. Ivoclar is doing this, also other companies. It is quite complicated to measure this, but we could see in the first trials that it is really working. So you have a recharge and we could also see that the mechanical properties really um, is absolutely stable of this material. These are just some scientific discussions that's clear this um, uh, battery effect, but it is really working. We could also show in a small amount that this is really functioning. So indication of sentient N, it is clearly class one, class two, and class five. Permanent deciduous teeth, it will mean in adults, in children, in young patients, in aged patients, it is self-curing material. I have light curing option. And I have really a reduced application procedures. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my presentation is not going ahead. I don't know how it comes. I have still internet connection, but it's not going ahead. Okay, no? Okay, 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 good. Target dentistry group is clearly for me. Remember my paramount, public government healthcare, dental basic healthcare, pediatric, we will show, geriatric and socioeconomic healthcare. Absolutely clear target dentistry group. What about the preparation? Because basically we are not using an adhesive to make it simple, financially affordable. It is a classic retentive preparation like for amalgam. But okay, during the times, my friends, we learned also, you know, we don't cut away so much material. When we have a, a carious, 
you know, a carious which is extending into the dentin, you know, you already have the geometry of some retention. So we learned also not to cut away extension for prevention so work. A little bit, okay, we need retention. You see here, okay, with my picture for um, fixing a, a steam liner, you know, a ship, but a small groove is also possible as a retention. This is macro retention, okay? So these are, for example, preparations for a study. A colleague, uh, Betsy Turchin and myself, we did in Cambodia in a study. You see, these uh, are primary lesions with small cavities, okay. We didn't cut too much away. This with a nice retention is okay. Just a personal experience, I'm using just six spurs for 80% of all my restorative work. For cranial bridges, that's another point. But for this, I take a small round burr, uh, a small cylinder, a big one for the molars. 80 micron uh, diamond grain size. And for the beveling finishing, I take half the size, 40 micron. This is my personal experience. I do this since 30 years in this way, and this is really working. Reduce your clinical instruments. Cost you a lot of money to refill all this. And then, um, okay, you, you have your preferences, but choose, select your preferences, make it smaller. So the clinical application is clearly without adhesive retentive design. Little bit more than two degrees is okay. The minimal death is about 1.5 millimeter. Now, the material is hand mixed. I have powder bottle with the fillers inside and the liquid with the dimetacrylates. It is clearly one to one. One scoop of the powder, one drop of the liquid. You make two portions, you know, and you will see it afterwards in a video and you mix it by a folding technique. Mixing time is between 45 seconds until one minute. And then you place the whole material back into the cavity without layers, inside tough. You adapt it with every instrument you have in your clinic, no special ones. And after four to five minutes, my colleagues, this is depending on the situation in, in the clinics, temperature, four to five minutes, because you know it is self-curing, automatical curing, auto-curing. After four to five minutes, it's completely cured from the top to the bottom, completely. I show you now this mixing with a small video. This is the bottle of the liquid. There are the dimethyl chlorides inside. I'm using a mixing pad, paper mixing pad, and then one drop, you close, and then comes the powder bottle. These are the filling, the fillers inside. I shall explain you afterwards the filler in detail. This powder, you take one scoop. There is a special device you can measure perfectly one scoop. And it's really important to do an exact measurement. So you place it on your mixing pad. You are doing two portions, okay? And then, this is important, what now comes, you extend the liquid. I have a bigger surface for the absorption and more extended surface. Same so folding technique, as I mentioned before, 45 seconds and then it is absolutely mixed, nothing more. And then you place it all the thing inside without any layer inside with any instrument, metal, titanium nitrate coated, uh, also the old size uh, amalgam instruments, absolutely working. You don't need special ones. The working time available you have is around two minutes and a half. It's also depending on the situation outside. Two minutes and a half, you, okay? And then after, okay, you can do all the sculpture if you want with the instruments you have available, everything. Then after four to five minutes, you remove 
the matrix and you can adjust the occlusion. So question always comes, um, must be the operation field absolutely dry? Okay, for me, it is in between the sensibility, in between amalgam and composite. You cannot work under saliva. We are not swimming in a saliva, that's clear. But some humidity is okay. Cotton rolls, you can handle it. You see here in India also the suction is not so perfectly, but okay, it works, I tell you. So clinical application, I have only four working steps. Those mix, fill and finish. When you compare to glacionomous cement, you have a lot of steps, 11 steps. Sention N only has four steps. So it is really a reduced application time. So material looks nice, 100% lifelike appearance, because I have a translucency of 11%. Glacionomous cements, all these types have less, three to four. That's why the appearance of glacionomous cements, you see it here, it's a little bit more opaque. I have nothing against glass cement. As I told you, I'm using also glass cement. The appearance is a little bit more opaque. St. Union has a nicer appearance in this way. It's more aesthetic than glass cement and amalgam. Some words about the resistance to fracture. This is really important because in the posterior region, it is necessary to have at least 80 megapascal flexor strengths. And now you see the difference. St. Uden has over 100. Fuji 9, only in the 20s. Maximum is 36 for Ketak Molar. So you see, we are not fighting uh, about 10 or 20 megapascals. It is really a word. And this makes, this makes the resistance to fracture. Some words, some personal experience to do the restorations in class two. When you are doing amalgam restorations, you are doing the condensation, okay? You give pressure, okay? So you can create easily contact points. Also in the composite technology, when you are doing layering, okay, you have a time to do. Here, with this full volume replacement material, you don't have time. So how I do it? I do it with the so-called pre-wedging technique. I'm only using wood wedges. So before I'm doing the preparation, I push the wood wedge is in the interdental area, okay? And then during my preparation and the water, I already have an extension, a separation. Then after I did the preparation, I place my rubber dam if possible or not, Place my matrix, can be plastic, can be metal, sectional, whatever you're using, and replace immediately my wood wedge. So I can save this separation. It's working, this pre wedging technique. So it is important, you see my case here, deep carriers at the distal part of the first lower molar. You know, my wood wedge is in place. And at the end, you check with floss if you create nice contact points, because this is. My friends, our, the dentist's responsibility is to do this. Application instruments, as I told you, every instrument is possible. Some words, deep cavities, close to the pulp. This is our philosophy at the Zurich University. We are placing just one point of calcium hydroxide, just at the deepest point, and then you can cover directly with St. Union. It's working. In other words, you see on the left-hand side, preparation. Okay, after I did the preparation, slight, slight retention is okay. I blow it out with my, I rinse it out with my water spray. I dry it with my uh, air, air uh, syringe, not too much, smoothly. And then I do the restoration. And then after the polymerization, after the curing, you check the occlusion. And then you see the shining surface. And this you should not forget. You see the inhibition layer. This is unpolymerized restorative material because of the oxygen in the air. This layer is very active 
when you are doing the layering technique, you know, first layer, second layer, you place this. In the self-curing mode here, you know, you have it at the surface. If you would touch with your tongue, it is really, it has bitter taste. We had in Asia some dentists and patients, they said, oh, the, the material sent you is wonderful, but I have afterwards bitter aftertaste. Yeah, this is just because, because they touch with the tongue this surface. So one trick in children, you know, mostly it's not necessary to do adaptation of the occlusion because it's mostly this flat. So you just take a paper, a paper tissue and you wipe it off. And then in adults, when you have to adjust the occlusion, please do it with diamond or tungsten carbide burrs under water irrigation. You know, it's very simple. And then you never have bitter aftertaste. But at first, you know, really, I was asking myself, hey, from where is coming this stuff? But it's okay. Uh, this is unpolymerized restorative material. So the starter kit, you can do more than 80 single tooth restorations. It's depending if you're doing molars or premolars, that's clear. So we have these three points. A good flexible strength, strong material, it looks nice, and we have iron release on demand. This makes the difference. Now some chemical, shortly some chemical aspects, material basics. I have altogether five types of fillers. Uh, one is calcium fluorosilicate glass, the alkaline glass at the bottom left. This is for me really the magic glass for the iron release. But I have other, uh, you know, very experienced fillers like the barium aluminium silicate glasses uh, fillers. These are also in other composites inside. A special one is the so-called isofiller in the middle. This is um, for a lower shrinkage because it acts like a micro spring. Normally, the shrinkage is in this way, you know, in three dimensions, in this way. And this, the isofiller acts like a spring, you know, in the contrary uh, opposite side. So this is really, that's why we have only a shrinkage, a volume shrinkage of 2.6%. And the material uh, itself is really highly filled up to 78%. So it is a dual cure initiator system. I told you self curing, but I have optional a photo initiator inside the most modern one I was seeing. So when you have a light curing equipment, you can use it. You can cure three millimeter. So in children, pediatric, uh, aspect is very useful because you can cure three millimeter and the bottom will cure itself. You cannot stop the chemical process. So monomere matrix is our cross-linking monomeres. We have two types uh, of high viscosity. It is not anymore VCMA, it is UDMA and newly developed. So we have afterwards really a wonderful polymeric network. So in vital results, just shortly, as I showed you, the flexible strength is measured in this way, compressive strength in the other way. And here you have in comparison, summarizing flexible strengths much higher than glass universe cements. Compressive strength is also higher. Radio opacity is also fine. You can see afterwards in some clinical cases. Other point, Ivoclar was also clearly analyzing the where. We did this in my university with this method because what is where? Simply said, it is the loss of substance. Like your tires of your car, of your motorbike. After some months or years, you lose some materials. This is normal. Also in our mouth. You know, our um, restorations, they will lose a little bit material over the time, but we don't want to lose too much. In, in two years, we don't want to lose too much. So we measured this with this method with a ceramic antagonist and moving against the specimen. And then 
you see the difference. In the middle, glass universe cements. Some much more wear, loss of substance. On the left-hand side, red, St. Yun N, self-care, light cure, so there's a small difference. Right-hand side, ceramics from 3M, set 350. Composite, composite, you see, composite has less, less uh, loss of substance than glass universe cements. So this is the difference. And then you see my um, measuring equipment. The fossa in St. Yun N is only a flat so fossa. I have some loss of substance, okay, somewhere. That's normal. If it's too hard, you know, this is the problem in ceramic. If it's too hard, you have joint problems sometimes. But you see on the right hand side, you see class universe cement, much more fossa. So all these parameters. Solubility, volumetric shrinkage, I already told you 2.6% by volume. You know, all these things are according to ISO standards 4049. If somebody of you in, is interested, you can write to me. I can organize a basic scientific um, documentation, 60 pages strong, also digitally. You can read it through. Everything is written. I don't, uh, it makes no sense to show you all these things. Send your end using without adhesive. What do we see at the margin? We see gaps. We expect this. It's normal. But these gaps are small, 15 to 45 microns long. You cannot see this. Even not with your glasses, with, many, with the loops, magnification loops, you cannot see it. And we don't care. Amalgam has also gaps, small gaps. And Additionally, in these gaps, we have our products, calcium fluoride, calcium phosphate. This is the bioactivity. It's also uh, playing a, a big role also at the border of our restorations. Now, at the end, uh, there are in the past, in the last six, seven years, a lot of studies were done in the world um, around the world, okay, it was has been interrupted by COVID. This was a big problem. We could not do recall and so on. Uh, the first uh, study was in Turkey, in Istanbul, together with my university in Zurich. They did the restorations. We sent assistance from my country to check it and send to have a look after two years. As uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, in the States, we have in Malaysia. In Cambodia, now another study is restarting after COVID also in Cambodia. So study in Turkey, um, after two years, we just sent a questionnaire to the patients to ask how you feel with our material. And 98% said, okay, they gave the highest score, meaning they were satisfied with aesthetics and function. But okay, we checked also other things, but this was at first, we wanted to know from the side of the patients. Then this study in the States is for me the most interesting one uh, because in the same study, we had amalgam in the same patient, amalgam. We had sention with an adhesive, sention without an adhesive. We did class one, class two, 30% were class one, 70% class two. And you see how it functions. Just, I give you one example. After two years, you Can see great capacity. Okay. So you see, you see, this is just one example. And then the results after three years, you see the gray columns are indicating amalgam and the blue, green are indicating sentient with and without. So it was interesting, really, that sentient N scored clinically excellent or good for over 90% of the restorations. And there were really almost no difference between adhesive and without adhesive and comparable to amalgam, absolutely comparable. So at the end, how it looks in the patient. Again, radio opacity. You see, it is enough. We don't need more. Then another case, have a look at the contact point. This is always 
important to see. This is a case I did uh, five years ago, still in place. This was a cancer patient with a deep caries. My friend, the surgeon, told me, oh, please take out this caries. And uh, OK, this is a basic filling, you know, because this patient at this time really had severe problems, medical problems. It is not high aesthetic, but it is a strong filling, still in place. From my colleague in India, just cotton rolls, no rubber dam, sectional matrices, it's working. You see also the cotton rolls are a little bit kind of wet. It is not a dry operation field, it's working. Another case from India, geriatric dentistry, you know, just some premolars left, not so many teeth left, it's working. Pediatric dentistry. We had a, a study in Brazil. This was done by ART technique. You are familiar with atraumatic restorative therapy. It was done by dental students, just excavation, no drilling equipment in children. They had, uh, this was in um, Amazon um, uh, surroundings in Brazil. Uh, they didn't have dental equipment, you know, just tables. The kids were on the table. It was working. A colleague of mine in the Philippines, you know, really, she's this lady, Mylene, is really skillful in sculpting, you know. This is not layering technique, just, you know, full volume replacement. And last case from a colleague, a friend of mine in South Africa, before and after daily, daily work to do, it's working. So for me, at the end, St. Yonen is an open system. In the middle, you have class one, class two, hand-mixed, self-curing. Yellow, when you have a light equipment available, use it, my friends. You can use, you can work faster, in children, for example, also in adults. Red, if you see I don't have enough retention, you can use an adhesive because self edge adhesive whatever you are using in your in your clinic you can use because composite to composite is working absolutely it's working but i'm using in basic dentistry just when i see i don't have enough retention it can happen you have a fracture of a, a cusp tip okay you see mm, okay it's not enough okay so you using an adhesive so at the end with green you even you could do in case a class three, even a class four as emergency situation. It is not the, the best, you know, indication, but it's okay. You could do, you could do everything. Also, endodontists like it very much. Also, me too, when you have to do an endod case, you have a big cavity, okay? And at the end, after you did your put up perch, all this stuff, you mix inside self-cure, build up for a crown, it's absolutely working. So I'm at the end, delivery forms are this starter kit, 15 gram, four gram liquid, and we have only one shade, A2. It's absolutely sufficient for a basic filling material. So I would, I'm at the end, I thank you for joining me. This is our most famous mountain in Switzerland, the Matterhorn. Uh, we only have snow now on the Matterhorn. Now here we have also even 30 degrees now in Switzerland is too much, but okay. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm open for questions and I give back to Constance. If you have a question also, you can write to my email, philip at schneider ch. I try to help you. And additionally, I would like to say I come to Zimbabwe in August to your famous Congress. It is from August 6, I heard. I, I think I'm right. Okay. I, uh, I plan to come and I'm already looking for um, airline tickets. Thank you very much. And I give back to Constance. Thank you, Doc. That was a great lecture. Um, you can check in the chat box. There are quite a number of questions. If you open the chat. There's moment. Uh, yes. Uh, just a moment, I have to check. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. 
Okay, I don't see it yet. I don't. Oh yeah, okay. Just you can see the chat now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I go ahead. Okay. So from the first one from Doctor Bayua, can you see that one? Yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, just let me read uh, a few related questions. How much is the product per unit? What you mean the, the price or what? Or, or yes. the 